If you owned Mario 64 on the DS, you probably remember this minigame. Where you draw lines on your screen to reroute the heads of Mario characters to their respective bodies. Well, I decided to remake this game in Godot, and here's the story of how I did it. The thing that I loved most about this game, and the thing that I was most excited to recreate, was the drawing mechanic. Making the longest possible line, placing as many tightly packed lines as I could to create a solid shape, or just trying to confuse the game into making an arrangement that would send multiple heads to the same body. Spoiler, you can't. Godot came to the table prepared with a built-in node called Line2D, a line constructed of points. What more could I ask for? I wrote a script so that when the mouse was clicked, a point would be placed at the mouse's position. It then regularly checks to see if the cursors move beyond some arbitrary distance, and if so, adds another point. That's drawing. Now to flatten our hard work. I noticed that when the game straightens the lines, it only seems to care about where the line starts and ends. So when the mouse is lifted, I remove all but the first and last point of the line. Great. But now I need to actually snap each end to the surrounding guidelines. First, I had to actually figure out which guidelines are surrounding. It's not just the closest guideline to each point, because the drawn lines aren't allowed to cross over other guidelines. Instead, I get the center of the two points and then look for guidelines that surround that. Using some basic trig, I move each point to its associated guideline. We're almost done, but there's still a few key things I need to check for. First, I need to make sure the line is actually between two guidelines and not at the edge of the screen. But even if it is drawn between two guidelines, it could still be drawn in such a way that the line stretches off screen or to infinity. So I need to check for that. And finally, I cannot allow two lines to overlap. To do this, I look for the line whose left point is directly above the new line's left point, and check that its corresponding right point is also above the new one's right point. If not, the line doesn't get made. I do the same thing but flipped for the line directly below. With that, my favorite part of the game is done. But now I need sprites to actually be able to follow the paths I've made. So I started with this. Each sprite starts by snapping to the nearest guideline. Each sprite then searches for the next point along and remembers the line that it's a part of. When it gets to that point, it switches to a line crossing mode until it comes across its next guideline. This process repeats until it gets to the bottom. And this solution worked most of the time, which is actually worse than just not working at all. I think part of the problem was inconsistency. Sometimes I was using floats, sometimes I was using integers, and this created some glitchy edge cases. Fixing these things helped, but my ultimate solution came when I switched my strategy from figuring out a path on the fly to a system where each sprite was actually a path follower, which is a built-in node, progressing along a path, another built-in node. The path would use my old code to calculate a path once and change its shape to match it. The benefit of this is that I could easily change the move speed of the sprites without worrying about them overshooting the next point and causing problems. Next, I needed a way to match up the characters' heads and bodies. To do this, I gave every guideline an index and every sprite an index. Every round, I shuffle them, and if by some chance they all line up, I shuffle them again. Was I forced to redo this code over and over again because I kept making obvious mistakes? Maybe, but I don't feel like talking about it. Now the fun part! Art. Let's make some characters. When I started this project, I had no idea what these characters would be, but I knew that I wanted them to have a similar style to the original game. And in the minigame, they have a very specific high contrast toy model look to them. They use a very limited color palette and a very noticeable dithering to transition between the different shading levels. I'm guessing they're using a 3 bits per pixel color scheme, which is odd because the DS supports 5, as can be seen pretty much everywhere else. My best guess is that they just needed that extra compression. Or maybe like me, they just liked the way it looked. Either way, when I eventually decided on stuffed animals for the characters, that was the style I aimed for. I didn't realize they were using a lower bit depth at the time, so my best approximation was just to limit my color palette. I've always heard that a smaller color palette is an easy way to make your game look more cohesive and aesthetically pleasing. Anyway, I picked out the biggest one I could find and started making a frog. The process was a lot like sculpting. I block out some shapes, then go in and refine them with smaller details. The frog turned out a lot more realistic than I thought it would, so to make it more interesting, I added a little bow tie. I ended up giving all the animals bow ties, partly for cohesion and partly because it helped hide the awkward transition between the head and body. For the shading, I'd start off by layering circles of different values to get an idea of where the light was hitting. Then I'd adjust it to match the curvature of the body and dither to smooth out the transition. I think the dithering on the frog looks a little too perfect, but if you squint it still achieves the correct effect. Making the penguin was a very similar process, except that this guy was even rounder, which made shading all the more fun. I think I nailed the body, but the feet look a little flat. The face, however, is perfect. 
Then I made the bunny, which was a little tricky, both because I wanted to fit the ears within a specific texture size, and because I wanted to make the bunny blue, which had me a little worried it would come out looking like other well-known blue bunnies. But it didn't. Hooray! The fox was last, and I think it turned out the best. It deviates from the others by having a slender design and a slightly smaller tie, but what I really like is the shading and overall contrast. At this point, I should be almost done, but I'm not. See, in the original game, the screen opens, you play, and between the scenes, there's a star-shaped wipe or nothing. Everything just pops into place. But I had already decided on this game being set in a factory, and I thought it would be really cool if between levels there was a little animation of the finished toy sliding out on a conveyor belt, the new body sliding in, and the heads being dropped off from hooks. Sort of like in the 3DS download screen. Apparently, that makes things slightly more complicated. First, the conveyor belt. It started off as a 2D sprite. I figured out how wide I wanted it, how many gears it should have, and used perspective lines to determine the angle of the design pattern. After spending a long time making a pixelated gear that actually looked like a gear, I discovered that it's very difficult to make pixel art rotation look right. So I took a page out of my own notebook from three years ago and remade the gear in 3D. Except this time, instead of rotating the rendered sprite, I animated the gear in 3D, rendered out the frames, exported them into a sprite, and manually adjusted the colors to fit the color palette. Now the gears look good, but the rest of the conveyor belt still needed work. I tried animating it so that it would look like it was going the right speed, but also lined up with the gears, but the effect didn't look quite right, so I went into Blender and made a copy of the scene projected into 3D so that I could animate pixelated guidelines to get a better sense of the changing perspective of the conveyor belt. I rendered it out at a frame rate that would match the rest of the animations, overlaid them, and then thought, why am I doing this? Why don't I just make the whole conveyor belt in 3D? Boom. Beautiful conveyor belt, shaded entirely with vertex colors, by the way. Basic shader for the scrolling texture, plus a shader global variable so that I could control the speed from code. The hooks are not 3D. I painted that. Where things got really messy was with the animation. I used tweens for the bodies and conveyor belt, an animation player for the hooks, and signals for both. But I didn't have them communicate properly at first, so I kept ending up with these weird little errors where things would suddenly snap to a position. It just made code messier than it needed to be, especially when it came to resetting the level between games. But in the end, I got it working. From there, I spent some time working on a specially calculated scoring system, which I ended up ditching in favor of just showing your highest score and lowest time. I made some basic UI, nothing fancy, and that's because as much as I want to enjoy making UI in Godot, it keeps frustrating me. But that's for another video. And then, I did the sound design. For some reason, I always dread the process. And yet, it's always fun. I love making noises and turning it into art. I'm glad that's a thing. Plus, Godot's audio bus system is actually really fun to mess with, especially when you get into the filters. To finish off the visuals, I made a background image for the game. It's a pre-rendered 3D scene with some random objects that look like they belong in a factory. Now do they look like they belong in a toy factory? I don't know. But they're here. Finally, I added a song. It's extremely short and repetitive, just like the original. But as far as things I've composed, it's better than a lot of my other stuff. Take a listen. Or don't. You don't know me. With that, I had recreated Connect the Characters and made it my own. And I'm happy with it. There's a link below if you'd like to play. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to work. Hopefully on a forthcoming video or game. If you're interested, play the game, let me know what you think, and post your best score in time in the comments. That's all. Ciao for now.